So you've recently suffered from a malware attack and you've taken steps to remedy this problem. But are you sure you've got all of the viruses? Here's how pros make that exact determination. This is Nico Knows Tech. Nico Knows Tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico Knows Tech, number one channel with the news on deck. A malware attack is a very stressful situation for millions of people across the globe every single day. And I totally understand that. You had somebody that's violated your privacy, maybe stolen from you, hijacked your data, or was actively spying on you. This can have the same effect that someone breaking into your house can cause, where you no longer feel safe in your own house. And until you've fully secured this house, or in this case your computer, you don't feel safe on using your computer. So <clears throat> I've made this tutorial to teach you exactly how to overcome this, how to be certain so that you can go about your day in peace and security. Okay, the first tool we're going to need for this is going to be Auto Runs. This is a Windows Cisternals official Microsoft tool used by professionals. You'll uh, it, do a Google search and you'll search for Auto Runs, all one word. You'll hit enter and you're going to see it under docs.microsoft.com. Um, you can also get it through the bleepingcomputer.com, which is another domain we trust. Don't get it from anywhere else. I can't be certain that it's uh, not a problem. But we're going to get the Microsoft one here. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, one here from Microsoft here, you can download Autoruns and Autoruns SC. And you'll download that. That's a zip file. I already have it downloaded. And I ha it'll just be a folder. The best place you could put it on is on the desktop after you unzip it. Because this is not an installed application. It's just a standalone tool. Inside the folder, you'll have Autoruns EXE, Autoruns 64XE. If you have a modern machine with four gigs of RAM or more, most likely you're on 64. So you'll right click on this and run as administrator. This will be what you see first. You won't have this showing here on the right. So what you'll do is you could hit F12 to stop the scan and you will go to options, scan options, and then you'll check these boxes here check virustotal.com and submit unknown images then click rescan now what this is doing right now is it is checking all of these entries and I'm gonna go over what these are against virus total virus total <coughs> is a uh, a website which uses the entire community of malware scanners to assess everything so let's go to virustotal.com and what VirusTotal is a service that will compare URLs, entries, files, and it will compare them with, on average, 76 of the world's virus scanners. So, for example, I can even put a URL. You can paste URLs into here, and it will uh, show if there's anything going on. Of course, there's some Google things that have been phishing, but here's what everyone else says. It's, of course, clean. It's Google. Okay, back to auto runs. We look here, these are all registry entries uh, for everything running on the system. And if there's malware, it's going to have a associated registry key. You know, a lot of people will go into regedit and they will try and do things this way. But if you're not a, uh, a software engineer or a uh, systems engineer or a professional, this is not going to make any sense to you and also you can get yourself into trouble and break windows if you do the wrong thing here there's a lot of things in windows 10 that look suspicious which are completely innocent it's just the the way things work so stay out of reg edit this will be your guide through the registry and also through everything so i see here adobe aam updater and it shows a result of one out of 74 on virus total and it's in red, so that seems like it might be spooky. Well, 1 out of 74 is considered a false positive. So you can click on it. It'll take you to the entry on virus total. And you can see all of these people that say that it's a green check mark. There's nothing wrong with it. Secure Age APX says that it's malicious. But Secure Age APX is a uh, heuristic-based scanner, which just looks for any type of behavior and will flag it as malicious, even if it doesn't know what it is. So one out of 74 is not a detection. I don't consider a detection, you know, reasonably worth my time unless it's more than three. So back to virus, uh, back to uh, where here are. We can look at other things here. Now, a good thing about um, auto runs 
is that even if it's not an infection, I have full control over the entry. Um, if I don't want something to run, if I uncheck it, then it's immediately going to be disabled in the registry. Okay. We got everything that's here in pink. This doesn't mean that it's an infection. It means that it's not verified by Microsoft. Um, for example, 7-Zip is made by Igor Pavlov. He doesn't pay for Microsoft to certify it. So it's something to look at, but it doesn't mean it's an infection. Something to consider looking at if you have a pirated copy of Windows, you'll often see official Microsoft Windows published in, uh, will be not be verified. It's impossible for Microsoft Windows um, entries that are made by Microsoft to be not verified by Microsoft. That was something, something suspicious. So if you have that going on, you need to reinstall Windows with a legitimate copy, or you may have had a legitimate copy which, is, which has been completely compromised by malware. Um, in those cases, that's a severe breach and you do need to reinstall Windows. But in this case, I'm just going down here. Digifresh, that's by Avid Technology. It's not verified, but I know what it is. We have this entry here, one out of 74, Lightning Service. That's perfectly fine. One out of 74 is not a detection. Two out of 74 is not a detection. Three out of 74, I'll look at, but if I'm not sure about what it is, I'm not gonna consider it an infection. If you can't be certain it's an infection, don't assume that it might be. Okay, that's actually backwards thinking. A real common mistake that people make after they've been infected is they will go through Task Manager and they will see everything running here and they'll look at all of these SVH hosts um, and they will think that this is malware. They'll think that all of these different processes running automatically are something to be concerned about. They're not. SVCH host, for example, is the way Windows computers communicate over TCP IP. That is completely normal. Having a lot of communications out of a Windows machine without your permission is unfortunately how Windows 10 works. There's a lot of stuff going automated for you to make the machine work for you. And some of it is a privacy issue, which I have another video on that. But it's not malicious. Um, going through Task Manager at Processes and Google searching Processes, you're going to get a lot of information from people who don't know what they're talking about posting on the internet because they think that since there was a Trojan five years ago that used SVCH host, people are going to think that SVCH host is malware and it's not. You're going to break Windows by messing with it. Um, LSAS is another common one that people think is a major infection. It's not. Um, <clears throat> con host, these are normal functions of Windows. So stay out of Task Manager unless you know exactly what task you're going for. Um, if you want to go up to the next level of, of, of some pro analyzation, you'd want to use Process Hacker. Process uh, Hacker can be found through SourceForge. And it's right here, processhacker.sourceforge.io. Don't download it from anywhere else because there are fakes of everything. Matter of fact, quick way to get infected is to put free before something you're looking for. You're gonna find a whole bunch, here's one. You're gonna find a whole bunch of malware. This is malware, <laughs> um, but it looks legitimate. So don't put free in front of a, something you're searching for. There's probably a free version without you adding the word that attracts malware actors. Okay, in Process Hacker, this is a more advanced, gives you more information about what's going on in Task Manager. I'll click here in the columns, choose columns, and I'll add command line so I can see what some process is doing on the command line, and then integrity. And where is integrity? Here it is. I hit OK. Now I can see the integrity of everything. And what I will do when I'm looking for malware is I'll look for anything in purple. Not blue, but purple. Orange is nothing. Yellow, OK. We're, look, we're not looking for red. That just means a new task. So I don't see anything in purple. Purple means something has been debugged. You wouldn't want your kernel debugged because that's evidence of a rootkit or ransomware, or, you know, and uh, serious infections. If you see processes that are in purple, that's something to look at. Another thing you can do with Process Hacker during an infection is let's assume that I'm running a scanner and it shows up as maybe a malware bytes or uh, or my Tron script, which you can check that 
up there. <clears throat> That's how to remove malware. And if I right click, I can, let's assume that malware is slowing down my process and hindering me from scanning. I can go into the priority and make it high. You don't want to go real time, otherwise all your processing powers can go to that one task and you can crash. Then IO priority, I can set that up to high. And I can force it. I can also go into a malware a malware task and I can suspend it. I don't want to terminate it because you're going to trigger a response on the malware. Uh, again, this is a bit into the pro territories. I don't recommend everybody doing this because you can get yourself into trouble and you'll have some people that are getting themselves chasing their own shadow by looking at processes, not knowing what they are, and thinking that they're a serious infection. I really want you guys to stick with auto runs. If you see something here that's an infection, it says 4 out of 74, you can go ahead and you can uncheck it. You can even go to the entry, go to properties, it'll tell you all about it. It's this DLL here. And you can do some man manual fixes, but <clears throat> if you're not a professional, don't break your system through auto runs either. Um, if you, I would rather you just uncheck something because if it's disabled, it's the same thing as removed, except it's using 300 kilobits of space or less. You can jump straight to the entry. It'll take you to the registry here, which is where you guys can get in trouble. But <clears throat> mostly, the purpose of this video is, is you've already ran scanners. You've ran Tronscript, like the video that I gave you. Um, you've ran everything. You, you just want to be have your peace of mind. Are you safe now? Well, if you're coming through here and you just see 1 out of 74 and everything else is blue across the board, then you are safe. You've succeeded. Congratulations. You can rest easy. So relax. Okay? <clears throat> you can use your machine again. And if you want some extra peace of mind, maybe upgrade your antivirus. Um, Defender is good, but it's not really designed for people with a high risk um, use case. So if you're downloading things that are free and you're down and you, you need to download apps from unverified sources, um, then I would recommend getting a better antivirus that has less false positives. Um, ESET's a good one. Um, ESET Internet Security is what we use. <clears throat> I'm not sponsored by ESET yet, but um, we use this. Right here. And um, where you guys and I like it is it doesn't have false positives. It'll stop active hackers. It has intrusion protection systems. So if you're worried about, you know, lateral infection by other devices on your network, well, then this is a good product for you. Um, and it doesn't weigh down your system. One last thing on, on auto runs, if you're trying to practice prevention, is remember how I was able to put that URL? Well, if somebody ever sends me a link, first off, I don't click links that people send me because that's just a quick way to get infected. Oftentimes your friends won't even know it's an infected link and they infected you because they're infected too. They don't know it. But if I just, you know, start looking for um, free games, this is a good way to get infected. Um, Epic Games is okay, Arcadium. Okay, I have a pie hole which blocks a lot. But let's assume that I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm not going to click anything here. I'll just copy it. Copy link. You can paste it in here and they'll tell you if it's a malware link. I know this one's safe. So I'll just... Not certain about all the content, but I know that particular link was okay. Okay, this one comes back as possibly phishing, but we don't know. Let's go to another one. URL. Let's see what it thinks of this free gaming site. Everything comes up clean. It did look clean to me. But you might have some people send you links. Like some dude sent me a link. He didn't mean to, but his... Discord is infected and he sent me a link which was dicksword.store and it was uh, let me do the whole thing it was supposed to look like discord dot store forward slash nitro don't click these links this was sent to me earlier 
Yep, Webroot, which is a source that I, I trust. They come up as malicious. So that's a phishing thing. It's meant to steal your Discord account is what it does. So that's auto runs and that's Process Hacker. I'll be releasing a more updated um, and advanced video in the next coming weeks. But I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you can relax now. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.